morning, grade fours. Today in language, we are going to be talking about the sneaky you or the sneaky subject that appears in all imperative types of sentences. So just a little bit of review. There are four different types of sentences we talk about. The declaratives tell us an interesting fact or something about something else. Our interrogatives tell us a question or they ask us a question. Our exclamatories tell us lots and lots of emotion. And finally, our imperative sentences tell us to do something. It's like they're ordering us to do something. So for example, this is an imperative sentence right here. Praise God every day. Now, when we have sentence like this, like this usually we try to locate the subject by underlining it, lining it once and the verb or verbs by underlining them twice. In a sentence like this, it's really easy to find the verb. What are they doing? Well, they're praising. Praise God every day. But finding the subject is a little bit trickier because the sentence doesn't actually tell us who is doing the praising. Yeah, we're praising God, but God isn't the one praising. We are the ones praising, the people being asked to do it by the sentence. So whenever you see a sentence starting with a verb like this, it's usually telling you to do something. So the subject in the sentence is you. And that's why I call it the sneaky you because you won't ever see it written down, but you is indeed the sentence uh, or the subject in every imperative sentence. So let's take that principle and apply it to some of our work. In the first part of our work, we're given an imperative sentence and we are told to double underline the verbs and underline the subject once. So in this sentence, pass the salad, please. The verb is pass. What's the subject? Who's passing? You are, because you're being asked to. So in the little brackets, we know that the sneaky subject is actually you. What about number three? Wait for me. Well, the verb is wait. Who's waiting for me? Well, you are, because that's who the sentence is asking. This also works for diagramming two grade fours. Whenever you can't find the subject, assume that the subject must be you and use it when you diagram your sentence. We're gonna do a few examples of diagramming just to jog your brains, and that is from part D of your page, so give it a try with me. Will the class learn about the many varieties of snails, Miss Brown? Well, easy to find the verb. Will is a helping verb and learn is also a verb. Now, if this was an imperative sentence, we would know that the subject would be you. But the question is, is this an imperative sentence? Well, actually, it's a question. Will the class learn about this? So who's learning about this? It's not you, it's the class. The class is learning. So class is actually the subject. When we diagram this, we start with the subject on this side, the class, and then we put both of our verbs on this side. Because they're not separated by an and, they go on the same line, so it looks like this. Class will learn, and I've diagrammed my sentence. That one's a little bit tricky. The other ones won't be that tricky, grade fours. Let's look at number three as proof. Tell me about the snail's favorite food. Well, what's the verb? Tell. Tell is the verb. Who's telling me? Well, it doesn't say it's an imperative sentence. So that means you are telling me. So my subject becomes you and that's the one that I diagram. So give it a go today, grade four. See what you can do, try them out. Make sure you've done all parts of your sentences and Hopefully you remember what each of these sentences do and what they mean. I wish you all the best today. Goodbye.